So, uh, the biggest fail of Debate Night 1, in my opinion, goes to John the Breakfast Cereal Hickenlooper. Um, this is on the issue of foreign policy. Now, I want to be clear. I wouldn't say that this is the biggest fail in terms of the perception of your average person. I'm saying it's the biggest fail to me. It's the thing that made me have the strongest reaction as I was watching it live. And you're about to see why that is. But without further ado, here's John Hickenlooper with Kyle's biggest fail of the night. You disagree. You said that you're open to keeping some service members in Afghanistan beyond your first term. I look at it as a Please humanitarian respond. issue, and with all due respect, you're looking at the condition of women. If we completely Thank pull you. our troops out of there, you're going to see a, a humanitarian disaster that will startle and, and, and frighten every man, woman, and child in this country. And I don't think, I mean, we have troops in over 400 different locations around the world. Most of them are small. They're peacekeeping. They're not greatly at risk. We're going to have to be in Afghanistan. Look at the progress that's happened in that country. We're going to turn our backs and walk away from people that have risked their lives to help us and build a different future for Afghanistan and that Thank part you, of Governor. the world. Thank you, Governor. Senator yeah, it's hard for me to put into words how angry that makes me. Because it it's like the lazy default assumptions that he has about the role of the United States government. And it's really arrogant, it's imperialistic, and it's totally out of touch with the majority of the American people. Um, so he says, by the way, virtually every other person they asked on stage gave one version or another of, we gotta get out. Now, some people left themselves more wiggle room and were more weaselly, like Ben on my stork, who basically said, like, he was asked, would you get out in the first year? And his response was, let's say the first term, not the first year. So, in other words, that's not on the top of his mind. That's not what he's thinking of. Here's how you answer that question for the record. Would you get out in the first year? Yes. <laughs> that's it. That's it. End of conversation. And actually, to his credit, which again is why I had Mayor Pete relatively high of the people on stage, um, he said that. He was like, yeah, I'd be out in the first year. And then he went on to say more, but he started with yes. Now, um, this was the worst answer. It, because he's not even, like, most candidates are smart enough to know they at least have to pretend to be anti-war to one degree or another. Not the breakfast cereal. Not Hickenloopers. Um... He calls the war in Afghanistan a, quote, humanitarian issue. That's right. It is a humanitarian issue. And we're on the wrong side of it. <laughs> Just so you know. I mean, it wasn't that long. It was a year ago where there was this big story about how, oh, shit. We just bombed a hospital and killed dozens of people. Innocent civilians. Our bad. Our bad. Our bad. Now, I don't know if it was us or our allies in Afghanistan, but we did it. We did it. <laughs> and we were at least involved in, like, the decision and the coordinates. Oh, that's where you bombed. The Taliban's over there. Go get them. So we've been there 18 years. Bro, people are born today who are <laughs> adults who weren't even alive at the beginning of the war in Afghanistan. Are we even, and here's the thing that gets under my skin more than anything else. Back in the day, they used to at least have the wherewithal to lie to us and act like, well, once we reach this goal, we can get out and declare victory. Now, I dare you to ask anybody who supports the war in Afghanistan, what's victory, when would you declare it, and when would we come home? If you ask Hickenlooper, he'd just be like, Phew. No. No, see, I... I'm trying to stay there forever, bitch. Like, that's what he really believes. Let's just stay there forever. We have places all across the United States, most notably Flint, Michigan, that don't even have clean water. Our infrastructure gets a grade of D+. This country is falling apart. And you want to permanently stay in Afghanistan and look out for Kandahar. Because, quote, the condition of women... Oh, boy, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, God. 
That's that's Harrisism right there. Keep it real. Not Kamala Harrisism, Sam Harrisism. Like, oh yeah. Pfft. They're so barbaric and backwards and the condition of women is so terrible that we have to be there. What are you supposed to do, bro? What are you supposed to do, bro? Um, I got news for you. We allied with warlords in Afghanistan during this war. Those warlords had child sex slaves. When U.S. soldiers blew the whistle on it and said, Whoa, whoa, I thought we're the good guys. I thought we're here to bring stability and do the right thing. And we're aligned with warlords who have child sex slaves because those warlords are nominally against the Taliban and Al-Qaeda? So, let me get this straight. We are accepting and supporting people who have child sex slaves. When they blew the whistle... They were dishonorably discharged from the military. So, what about those women? What about the child sex slaves? People who we are allying with and patting on the back. What about them? <laughs> Bro, we, ha we have to care about the condition of women? So, like, we have to be there. What part of caring about the condition of women includes overlooking child sex slaves, many of them little girls? Oh, that's right. None of it. It, it, it is, if you don't understand at this late date that these wars are not about humanitarianism or altruism or doing the right thing, I, I don't know how to have a serious conversation with you. You can't have a serious conversation. If you don't understand that there's a lot more that goes into this that we're not told, whether it's the opium trade or whether it's the trillion dollars of mineral wealth that's in Afghanistan, whether it's the oil in Iraq... You name it, the military-industrial complex, people getting rich. I'm not saying it's an evil, mustache-twirling conspiracy, but what I am saying is, when incentives align, you don't need an evil, mustache-twirling conspiracy. The conspiracy is right in front of your face. It ain't really a conspiracy now, is it? So, that frustrates me. Because, what, you really think, John Hickenlooper? Like, yes, that's why our troops are there. Our troops are there to protect the downtrodden women of Afghanistan, yeah? And then he goes on to say, well, we have soldiers in over 400 locations. Yeah, that would make our point, not your point. <laughs> he frames it as like, well, isn't that obviously good? No, <laughs> you would have to make an argument for that. You're not doing that. Um, and then he, I mean, this really sums up his whole attitude. He says, quote, we're going to have to stay there. But why? 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 You're not, you know, keeping law and order. By the way, I got news for you. The Taliban controls a larger percentage of the country today than they did before we went in. So this is just like the drug war. It is, by any metric, an abysmal failure. Because they said at the beginning of the drug war, well, we either need to massively reduce or eliminate drug use. How's that going? An equal number, number, or maybe even more, people are using drugs today than they did before you waged the war on drugs. And we flushed a trillion dollars down the toilet. And hundreds of thousands of people died. Because it, it's a literal hot war. <laughs> so, it, it's just an abysmal failure by any way you measure it. And there's nothing worse than, like, the smug default assumptions of a privileged douchebag. Like, Hickenlooper going, what do you mean, bro? It's a humanitarian issue, and we I care about the condition of women, and we, we're just gonna, we're gonna have to stay there. So for anybody who's still saying we have to stay in Afghanistan, you have to answer this question. What is your definition of victory? Tell me your definition of victory. If you can tell me what victory is, and how and when we can declare it and come home, then at least we're having a serious conversation. But they won't be able to do that. Because really, in their heart of hearts, they believe in permanent occupation. They believe in U.S. imperialism. They think rules don't apply to us. We can do whatever we want, wherever we want to do it. And that includes in Afghanistan. So you can shut the fuck up if you disagree with it and, and accept it. By the way, the most recent poll I saw in Afghanistan came out all the way back in 2013. That's a long time ago now, bro. <laughs> and, and you know what it said? I believe the number was 17% of Americans still supported the war in Afghanistan. And that was back in 2013. 
Think about that. The war in Afghanistan became even more unpopular than the Vietnam War all the way back in 2013. This fucking thing probably has a 5% approval rating today. And you want to run for president of the United States of America on a platform of, let's keep troops there. <laughs> let's keep you out of the Oval Office. Which, by the way, isn't going to be hard. You're polling at less than 1%. 